In the next two sections, we're going to be using what's called heat of formation reactions. With these, they're typically going to be in a standard state. So a standard state means that they were measured at a given pressure and temperature. So whenever you see a naught, so like here we have delta H naught, that means that this delta H, this enthalpy, was measured at 1 atm and 25 degrees C or 298.15 Kelvin. With this, we're going to be looking at standard enthalpies of formation, and that's where this little subscript F comes from. So it's a heat of formation done in a standard state. And the heat of formation reaction is a very specific reaction, and it occurs when we form one mole of a substance from the reference forms of the elements. So we'll see what we mean by this in just a second. But this is just a very defined definition of a reaction that we're going to be using. The first thing we need to discuss is what's the reference forms of the elements. And the way I like to think about it is it's how the elements are typically found in nature. All metals and transition metals are all monoatomic solids. So like Fe solid and sodium solid are in their reference state. Halogens. F2 is found in a gaseous state, Cl is gaseous, bromine is a liquid, hydrogen is in a gaseous state, O2 is in a gaseous state, N2 is in a gaseous state, and carbon is found as graphite. So these are the reference forms for all of these elements. So the reference form for oxygen is O2, the reference form for nitrogen is N2. So this is what we have to use to make product molecule that we are interested in for this heat of formation reaction. So the rules are to write a heat of formation reaction. What you do is you write one molecule or whatever we're interested in to the right of the arrow. Then look at the elements that are inside of your molecule of interest and write the elements in their reference state to the left. So whatever elements are inside of the molecule of interest, you write those elements in their reference state to the left and then you bounce the reaction. With this, Remember, you can't change the fact that it is only one molecule to the right. So bouncing is going to look a little bit different here. We are only going to bounce the species on the left-hand side of the arrow. So here I say write the heat of formation reaction for the following molecules. So C2O6O liquid. So what you do is you draw the arrow. You put the molecule of interest to the right. And then you say what elements are in there. Here we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and you write them in their reference state. A reference state of carbon is carbon graphite, hydrogen is H2 gas, and oxygen is O2 gas. And then you bounce the reaction by manipulating the stoichiometric coefficients of the species to the left. Remember, by definition, our formation reaction can only have one of our molecule to the right, so we can't change that. We have two carbons in our molecule. We need to put a two in front of graphite, we have six hydrogens in the molecule of interest, so we need three hydrogens. And here I only need one oxygen. So if I want to bounce this reaction, I need one half of an oxygen of an O2 molecule to bounce this reaction out. So remember, I balance it by taking one half, and we never want to change the stoichiometric coefficient in front of our molecule of interest. If we do another one, FeCl3, same deal, you put the arrow, you put the molecule of interest to the right, you figure out what elements are in there, so in this case iron and chlorine. You write them in their reference state. Iron is just a monoatomic solid, so Fe solid. Chlorine is Cl2 gas, and then you bounce the reaction. So I have one iron in the molecule of interest, so I need one iron on the left, so that's okay. So here, I'm taking Cl2 and I want three chlorines in my product molecule. How I'm going to get that is by multiplying my Cl2 by three halves. So this is going to balance it out.